Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Akron's hottest and fastest growing show, Free Throw to Go. I'm your host, Hank Forrester, coming to you live from the original Stakeout Studios basement location overlooking the rolling plains of Hardesty Park. Dang, that was an intro right there, Hank. Um, today's episode, you guys, is going to be brought to us by Amorgis and Associates. Our friends are here with us today, and they have agreed to sponsor us this year, which we're super, super stoked about. Um, because of their sponsorship, we are actually able to bring you guys the Daily Commute. Um, and you may have seen that. We've been um, chumming along doing that right around the 4 o'clock hour. And it really gives us a chance to um, give you guys any updates or any um, info on what might be going around on the roads as you guys head home from work or head out to practice or something like that. So let's welcome um, Amorgis and Associates with us here. Yay. Yay. Thanks for joining us, guys. Um, so again, they are hanging out with us and Hank is going to kind of run through some questions with them and we are excited to hear about their 330 story. All right, so we got Julius and Francis here with us today and, and that's one of the first questions we always ask right out the gate, guys. So what's your 330 story? Did you grow up here? Did you end, did you end up here somehow? Tell, tell us about you. Well, I'll start here. Uh, I'm Francis Mackey. Yeah, I grew up here. I was born in uh, Barberton, Ohio. Uh, uh, but take it home to Uniontown. I only stayed a little bit in Barberton. Uh, have a taste for the chicken as a result. But uh, born, raised here in uh, lovely Akron, Ohio. Went to law school here in Akron, Ohio, at the University of Akron. And on the first or second day of uh, law school, met Julius. Uh, <laughs> Ten years later, uh, they actually, you know, both of us actually had our law, still had our law degrees. And we, uh, we went into business here. Uh, Julius uh, had started Amorgis and Associates, and I came here about 10 years ago to handle the personal injury. And uh, Julius had started it before then from where we met in law school. Yeah, uh, and we, uh, we started to focus on um, handling people's, you know, families' uh, problems that are typically consumer problems. Uh, so when they get in an accident or when they have trouble with their bills, we fix it. Uh, and we've just been helping uh, people ever since and it, we don't really work for corporations we just work for families and people that's so awesome it's so great to hear and everybody you know loves to have help in their time of need so we're glad you guys provide that i'm not going to take us down a rabbit trail here but you guys i'm noticing a leg lamp in the background um so just for the good of the order did you guys have a good holiday did you you know enjoy a, a nice long break a reprieve from from the work life how'd that go yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm finally glad to, you know, um, our, my, my, my daughters go to the Elms and my son goes to Hoban and I'm, I'm good and glad that they're, they're back in school in person. Uh, so that's yeah, nice. I, After a, I, I actually it. saw uh, my son this morning having breakfast at 6.30 uh, in the morning and I said, what, what are you doing up and what are you doing? <laughs> and he said, I have school today. So uh, yeah, the holidays were nice. I'm glad to see everybody back at school though. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, my two girls also go to school with his two girls at the Elms. And uh, so, you know, we're happy that they're, you know, back at school, small, small classes, uh, so they can separate. Um, yeah, yeah, I know. That's I can... great. And, and over the holidays, I think we had uh, Scott Farkas from uh, Christmas Story uh, come and he signed this leg lamp. Francis had, had acquired this leg lamp. And uh, actually, he came to this office and did an interview, a special interview with you guys. That's right. Uh, and so we had a, you know, we had an uneventful but sort of fun, you know, uh, holidays. Not too many, you know, family members coming, uh, but, you know, yep. good. Uh, made, the, made, made it into a good time. Yeah, that's awesome. So not only are you helping families, but you got get some good family time in yourself, which is awesome to hear. And then, of course, butting up right against our holiday break, we had two huge events go on this weekend. Um, sports fans, I'm sure, would agree. We love seeing those Browns. And then, you know, Monday night, the Buckeyes come in. So did you guys get a chance to watch either one of those games? I'm well, sure you watched the Browns game, and I am hoping – that you watched the entire Buckeye game. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I did, you know, uh, watch the Browns game. And as you and I talked about beforehand, I, 
did watch the third quarter with a blanket over my head because I was <laughs> certain that it was all going to come crashing down. And I, I do have to admit, after I stayed up Sunday night reading and watching all of the post-game interviews, by Monday I was I was extremely tired. So I, I, I luckily, I didn't make it through the entire Buckeye game. I did fall asleep, but, uh, <laughs> you know, Julius uh, is you an didn't, avid You didn't miss fan. much. Yeah. He's an avid sports fan. Julius, um, what what uh, what did the professional teams, uh, the football teams, play for at the end of the year? Well, well <laughs> all of this is all uh, uh, all of this quizzing is very important. But uh, <laughs> but we're but we're happy for the first time in twenty years, uh, first time in fifteen years to have uh, beaten the Steelers. I think oh, everyone's happy about that. The, what, when LeBron, and first time to be in the playoffs. Ah uh, yes, <laughs> all of his balance. When uh, LeBron came back. Uh, couple years ago when he came back to the Cavs, a funny story. Great all, player, great we were, player. We were all talking about it, looking at our phones, talking about it. We were in a meeting and Julie said, this LeBron guy, uh, did he win the championship cup? Oh and my I goodness. said, yes, it's the, the championship cup he won. And uh, we're very happy for him to come back and perhaps we can win the tournament. And, and this, this is where we go. I mean, moving on. <laughs> okay, moving on. You're right. So, yeah, you're right. Julius is not, you know, he's not going to be the, uh, the the next Browns backer president. Okay. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Then, you never let, know. then let's pivot and go towards something that he does understand, and that's, <laughs> okay. that's law. Okay. So, <laughs> so all right. So, you, you guys started kind of giving us just a generic history of just So, if you want to dive more into that, you know, how you guys were founded, how you've adapted over the years, and, like, what it is that you guys really, truly specialize in. Mm -hmm. Well, I think when we, we talk about the one thing that really kind of crystallized, and, and let me explain. Yes, Julius and I have known each other for over, you know, we knew each other when we were in law school when we didn't know anything about the law. And 20 years later, I don't know if much has changed, but <laughs> you know, we're, uh, uh, we – you know, when you're in law school, you don't set out to say, this is what I'm going to do, and this is how I'm going to do it. But uh, really, now that we've both been in, in practice here in Akron for so many years, it, it's kind of crystallized that when I grew up, I didn't know any lawyers. I didn't know anybody's parents that were lawyers. I didn't know anything about the law, and it was very intimidating to me. Um, Julius's parents were lawyers, so he came a different angle from it because he saw what it could do. I didn't see what it could do. So uh, we pride ourselves on consumer-based practice. Uh, what we say, real help for real people. You know, real people, they get in auto accidents, they have financial problems, uh, they don't know what to do. There's no guidebook that says, so you've been in an accident, or mm -hmm. so you're, you're having a lot of financial problems. And that's what we're here to do. And, and, and it really is, comes from that Akron mentality, that DIY type thing. Everybody in Akron, you look at, you know, any, any musical act that came of Akron, Devo, the Black Keys, they're very DIY. And, and that's what we want to do. You know, I saw it, I was like, I didn't know how to do this. So I want to show other people, it's not so intimidating. We can help you. Um, so Julius and I have known each other for 20 years. And and uh, he really had a lot of help with, uh, he started with foreclosure, um, the foreclosure crisis, and it kind of led to bankruptcy. And mm -hmm. I came with personal injury. And these are things that really affect day-to-day -day people. And so that's kind of the history that we've grown up to be is, you know, a, a real law firm for, quote, real people. Yeah, I mean, and Francis is, is forgetting the first four, five, six years that we knew each other. We've known each other probably 26 years. Um, I don't know if you remember the first year or two of law school. It was very traumatic. It was. <laughs> and uh, so, the, uh, but, it, but it's true. We have, uh, w w you know, you kind of get to do what you see is the need for people. Mm -hmm. And for us, we just saw these big, you know, insurance corporations or these these big banks or credit card people suing uh, our clients. And so, you know, they're getting bullied around and we were just there to help them fight these bullies, right? And, and uh, it just became a real natural for us uh, to focus on, on these financial uh, things, you know, that are, they're getting bullied around. They don't know how to handle the accident. They don't know how to handle their debts and it's, and we do. And you know what? You can do it from home now. You don't even have to come to the office. You just do it from home. 
You can pick up a phone and sit on your couch. You can get help from us. So <laughs> it's fantastic. You don't even have to, usually you don't even have to go to court at all anymore. You can do it by right. telephone because of the COVID. So it's fantastic. And that really leads us into the next question. And that is how have things, you know, March 13th, you know, I've been very open about this March 13th, um, 20, 2020 changed our lives. I mean, that's the last time that my kids have been in an Akron public schools building. And that's really when everything changed for everyone, when we started the initial Ohio lockdowns. So how has that changed your business how has it changed your business model? How has it changed the, the way that you interact with your clients? Well, that's, that's, a, that's a wide, wide question. <laughs> um, because our, our business is very consumer-based, um, we're tied in. We, I was interesting. I, I was looking at some data we have, and I could probably tell you about the jobs report before they announce it because I see what our bankruptcy or I see what our personal injury numbers are. So as, as far as during the pandemic, uh, it's interesting. Uh, in, you know, I'll speak from the personal injury aspect. Julius will speak from the bankruptcy aspect. But from the personal injury aspect or the accident aspect, we've seen a couple of things. Number one, we've seen less people with insurance on the road. We've seen people get into accidents and we've actually seen a rise of hit and runs and a rise of uninsured parties. Because, I mean, let's be realistic. If you're in a financial bind, one of the first things you're going to throw off the side of the boat is your insurance because it's not, I, I can't eat my insurance. You know, I have the, you know, even though I quote have to have it, it's not doing me any good today. So we're seeing a rise in that. Now, interestingly, we've seen the you, you probably have even have seen the ads that said these insurance companies, auto insurance companies are going to reduce your rates because people are driving less. I personally haven't seen it. I haven't seen it as far as that goes. They're getting a lot of good press, but remember, this is at the end of the day. Insurance companies, auto insurance companies are businesses, and they're in business to make money. And they got to pay their employees just like everybody else, and they're getting less of their money. So they're going to be harder to deal with. So if you're in an accident, that's certainly something that we can assist you with. Now, bankruptcy, and Julius will speak a little bit more to that, but that's sort of been in a state of, you know, uh, for your Star Wars fans out there, the old Han Solo carbon freeze, you know, because <laughs> businesses aren't getting money to sue people and people aren't getting sued and they're not going into bankruptcy. So we're all just sort of <laughs> frozen in ice right now. So Julius, you want to speak more specifically on that? Yeah, uh, the so everything's in flux and a lot of people, you know, their jobs are in flux. They've been out of work for a few months or more or they're still working, but everyone else has been out of work. So their businesses may or may not be doing that well. So everything is in flux. And, uh, you know, so they have we have certain programs we can get them into either to, you know, get rid of their uh, get rid of their debts, uh, get, you know, to get a fresh start. But or particularly like you know, what people don't know is usually their payments on their cars, let's say 400 bucks or 500 bucks, is too much. And if we can lower that by half, we can help almost everyone who's, who has a, who even has a car payment, you know? So, uh, and that's really helping everyone. And we can do that across the board usually. They just have to qualify and that's it. So we can really do it from home, especially now, you know, the COVID has, has changed uh, where people you know, had to take time off work to come to the office and meet with us personally. Well, the courts don't force us to do that anymore because they want to protect, uh, they want to protect people. So they allow us to do it over the phone. And, you know, it's just, again, made easier and easier for regular people just to lower their car payments or get, or get rid of their debts. And these are regular families. These are families that have paid their bills uh, every, every month forever. So, uh, and we're helping them. So it's real easy. Yeah, and it, you, you bring up an interesting point, and then it, uh, um, Francis did, and that is everything's been put on hold. We're in that state of carbonite right now, right? Mm -hmm. And that comes to an end soon. Like, all of a sudden, blam. So when we look ahead of what's coming down the pike, I mean, we're a perfect example. We've had an opportunity to, to, to delay our mortgage 
for most of 2020. I've, you know, I've been very open about our DJ business. We lost 22 weddings this past year. And now I just got notified that I've now lost the next three months. I just lost three more weddings. So, so what that, that's, that's the point though, because we're still in that restriction stage that these um, halls are not allowing brides to have their receptions. So I just lost all of my last February and I just lost my last two March. So I have now three months now where I don't have (laughs) income again. But the point of that is I'm, I'm, I am like, exhibit a of what the issues are here um uh, number one i've lost my job basically due to covid and number two our payments are being delayed and then the mortgage company is going to say hey it's time here's your mortgage again and they want initially they're going to say hey we want it all at the same time right because it's been forbeared but at the same time maybe we could put it on the back of the loan if they'll allow you to do that but you look at all of the evictions that have been put on hold. You look at all the landlords that have not been getting paid throughout 2020. We got ourselves a situation and it's on both ends of it. So right. that's coming and it's about to happen here in the next month or two. What do you guys see coming and how, how do people like us and just in general, the landlords on one end and the renters on the other, what do you see? How, how, how's this going to shake out? Yeah, there's, <clears throat> That's an interesting question because uh, no matter uh, what kind of degree you have or how many years you've been an economist or anything like that, that, you know, at the end of the day, it's a question mark, but we know it's going to be at one end or the, there's two ends of the pipe. There's the <laughs> debtor <laughs> and the debt E, you know? So, and on a more practical basis, it's business and personal debt. Now, Interestingly, we'll talk, you know, Julius can talk about chapter sevens and chapter 13s in more detail here in a second, uh, because those are, those are standard. We know what that is. Chapter 13, the debt gets wiped out. Chapter, or I'm sorry, chapter seven, the debt gets wiped out. Chapter 13, it gets reorganized. And that's on a personal basis. What we're going to see and what is a new development is the chapter 11 section five or sub chapter five. Now, Hank, this is, this is right up your alley because it's a small, these are small business bankruptcies. Now we've heard of like Sears going bankrupt or Kmart going bankrupt or, you know, whoever going bankrupt and you're thinking, wow, that's a huge company. How could it, you know, and you need a lot of money to go chapter 11 in its traditional form. You need a lot of income to go chapter 11. What the legislature has done is they've made like a, you have the Whopper, now you have the Whopper Junior. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's the, uh, it's the small business chapter 11, sub chapter five. And they understand landlords, people that own a machine shop, people that own a trucking company. 40% of the businesses in the United States are, quote, small businesses on Main Street. We're a small business. Yeah. You're a small business. Everybody you know is in a small business. Um, so everybody, you know, that PPP loan money is going to run out things are going to become problematic. So we're on top of that as well. So we're looking at not only from the small business aspect, that's a chapter 11, sub chapter five, where let's say this is a trucking company you've had in your family for three generations. You employ 25 people. You make a few million dollars of revenue a year. You're not General Motors, but you're not, you know, a guy selling fruit by the side of the road either. And that's, that's where this is. And, and you think about it, nobody knows how this is going to work out. Nobody can be an expert in this yet because it's literally brand new. So we really have an opportunity to shape that market for the, for the debtor. Because quite frankly, if trucking companies, machine shops, wedding DJs go out of business, <laughs> it's going to be a really quiet place. <laughs> you know? So that's our chapter 11 business aspect of it. And yeah. James can speak more to the chapter 13 and seven, which is on a personal level. Yeah. And just before we, and just before we, we finish the, the nice thing about the bank, uh, about the small business bankruptcy is you get to keep the business going. It's not a bankruptcy where you close it. It's, it's specifically that you keep it open. You renegotiate everything. So you don't close your door necessarily. This is an opportunity for you to keep it going using the bankruptcy. So that's what people want is a way to keep going. And that's mm-hmm. what is so great about that small business uh, bankruptcy. It's, it's a negotiation over time to help things keep going. 
and your business survives. So that's the great news about, about that for small business. And Brad's absolutely right. We're all small business, <laughs> you know? If the small business has got a business, uh, the United States is out of business. And yeah. so yeah. we know that going forward, regardless if you're, you know, on which side of the aisle you're on, you understand that we have to keep these businesses going. And because, we can, and we can. And we're going to assist people in doing that as well. And then the, uh, uh, so for smaller, uh, for individuals, uh, as I said before, uh, who are having trouble where they uh, did or didn't have trouble before, it doesn't matter. We can help them reduce their cost down to what it should be. Uh, and, uh, and that's just to get in these programs, very simple, do it from home. And we can help, you know, almost, uh, it's just such a wide variety of people that are just regular moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas. We can help every one of them. And all they have to do is really call and just tell us a, one, a couple of debts and we'll handle, you know, we'll see what we can do about fixing their whole family in, in, in not too many minutes, really. It doesn't take a long time. So. And, and that's the one thing, uh, regardless if it's, bankruptcy or auto accidents or anything. <clears throat> uh, one thing I've realized over the 20 plus years I've been doing this is that the average person isn't aware of the options that they have. Um, and nobody's going to tell you. I always laugh and I, 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 t I tell my, my personal injury clients, I say, listen, you know, uh, I pay <laughs> with all the kids. I have three kids that drive. I have four cars. I've got you know, I just basically signed my paycheck over to the auto insurance company. And uh, I, I laugh and I tell my kids, I said, listen, they don't even tell you how to use this policy. You're paying thousands of dollars a year. We got a coffee maker and it had a 12 page booklet on how to make coffee. And I was good with that. <laughs> but I laugh because I said, we're paying thousands of dollars and nobody's telling you how to use this product. <laughs> and nobody's going to knock, no debtor is going to say, hey, hey, mm -hmm. hey, Julius, you should just go bankrupt. <laughs> you know, nobody that's holding your money is going to say, you should just go bankrupt. So people just don't know what the options are. And listen, um, we've been playing this game a long time. And if we, we can't help you, we can't help you. If we can, we're going to be glad to do so. But here's the greatest part is, if we don't know the answer, we usually know how to find out the answer. So that's, or someone that can help us answer that. Yeah, and that's the key. Just call and we'll give you your options. I mean, that's really the key in minutes. And so uh, that's an effortless thing. And, and, uh, and I urge everyone to, uh, if they don't want to call us, call their own uh, people that they know their own attorneys. It's operators, really fine. Operators are standing by. <laughs> are they? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> give me a give me a well, you just call me I'll, I'll answer whatever you got yeah uh. jess you got anything you want to add no that's so helpful like i said so so informational i love learning more about what you guys do um yeah, we know, just want to help that's so, all yeah, yeah yeah i can i can definitely see your heart in that so i don't really have any other additional questions do you guys have any closing thoughts no, it's anything just... else you want to add i know operators are standing by so people should feel welcome <laughs> and the and... call is free <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, you know, it yeah, doesn't it, you know what that's the main thing it doesn't cost anything there's no hidden it just we will answer your question well that's you know all it is. It, like no you problem kind of said, if you if you don't know better, how can you do better, right? So just yeah. calling and getting that information is super, you know, important and a great first step to kind of just yeah. learn about what's out there, um, and you know, just get some more information about what maybe could help you uh, personally. So yeah, yeah we yeah, love talking to people. Call. Yeah, yeah, we love talking to people. So yeah, call. Yeah, good. This has been great, Hank. Thank you guys. I appreciate you joining us and, and, and we'll keep chugging out those, those traffic reports. And like I said, Francis, every one, every once in a while, I'll do, I'll do a funny one out there just to spice it up a little bit. Hey, hey listen, and, and if, if any of those traffic uh, reports, there's an accident. Hey, and that, that's uh, that's the point. The right? operators are standing by. Don't that's worry, the point. Guys. I got you covered. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. This has been great. Uh, let's see what do we got coming down the pike, Jess. Oh, well, later on today we yeah, get we get we get to meet with our brand spanking new two University of Akron interns that are going to be starting out helping three through to go from from the WZIP program. So we're excited. We're going to be bringing them on. So 
I'll probably do some kind of a call with them, you know, not today, but probably next week or something along those lines. And uh, Jess doesn't know this yet. I, I, well, actually, I mentioned it to her yesterday. Yeah. We are going to be bringing on a new show next week. Oh, yeah. We've got, uh, we're going to be working with Brush Tip Studio out of Wadsworth. They have a second location down in Florida now, and they're going to be doing regular painting shows where they just in Bob Ross fashion will teach people how to paint. <laughs> Uh, for a half hour to an hour down on the beach. All right. So we'll be, we'll be bringing that show on board here in a little bit, but Hey, until then, I don't know where I'm going, but there ain't no sense of being late. Everybody out there say good night, Shirley. Good night. Good night, Shirley. Good night Shirley. Shirley. This podcast is a copyright of Moon Garden Media Limited. Oh, this is not peanut butter.